Drop a like and do share. Leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos. What's up, guys? This is Manoj Shoptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the ADPDO world. It's a wonderful day outside, and I'm sure that you guys must be enjoying your life to the fullest. Like as usual, guys. Perfect. Bang on. So. we have been discussing some of the relevant topics relating to the chapter of capital budgeting in my last presentation so the same thing will follow soon in this presentation as well and as well as in the forthcoming presentation before we start uh, taking up the examination questions so i need to make you understand a few relevant concepts so that that will help you up in understanding the questions thoroughly accordingly so by now you must have revised your topics which have already been covered in the last presentation if not then do revise them up because that is something which is extremely 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 crucial for you guys perfect guys first number seat belts we are about to take off with the first topic of the day and that will be appraisal of term loans by financial institutions and banks so guys what do i mean by appraisal of term loans okay let's suppose you are ram okay you are mr ram you just go on to the bank and ask the bank 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 i want a loan will you be able to provide me up bank will say definitely mr ram i was just waiting for you to come over here why not just take up the loan and go back to your home enjoy with the money dude perfect is that is something which is going to happen absolutely not so the bank will basically go for some of the study in order to ensure and check whether the person to whom the bank is basically going to provide the loan whether he is capable enough to repay the same loan repay that obligation on time or not so what's going to happen is they will appraise that term loan which they are going to provide you that's going to happen in this particular thing appraisal of term loans by banking institutions by financial institutions is a very big thing okay they have usually got uh, this process uh, basically being like uh, provided to other companies as well there are many of the banks uh, if i'll talk about various companies which basically work out on the process based mechanism like genpack accenture american express all these are the companies which are basically also taking care of this appraisal of the term loans by financial institutions process so what usually gets happened in this particular stuff okay i must tell you so all these development uh, financial institutions be it your commercial banks they basically appraise the projects okay before granting them the term loans their major aim basically of this appraisal activity and this complete system is primarily to assess that the whether the person to whom they are going to provide the loan is he find financially viable and uh, like feasible to provide him that particular loan or not and this basically will involve internal lot of assessments lot of assessments be it about your liquidity be it about your solvency be it about your uh, profitability so all these things will be taken care of before Uh, issuing that loan amount to you in that particular case the bank is going to check the margin of safety as well whether you'll be able to provide uh, them back with the debt amount and the project will be able to bear or not they are going to check that as well so based on all the information which will be like available in your project report remember guys project report which i discussed with you in my last presentation so whatever kind of information that you'll be providing them up in your project report they're going to detail uh, they're going to study that in a detailed manner okay they're going to assess that and this loan application will be like forming that part of the, your entire assessment okay and before uh, they provide you the loan they'll check it out completely because it's a long term commitment okay the bank is basically bearing that risk on your behalf you don't need to feel like okay you are the only person who is going to take up the loan amount and you'll be like repaying it back absolutely bank is something which is basically uh, is the one which is bearing the risk on your behalf okay so bank need to be insured and uh, the bank needs to be sure about this thing whether the kind of security that you are providing them up whether uh, that will be sufficient enough for them to uh, cover up their expenses and their interest and principal amount out of that or not so they are going to check that completely because they are the ones who are uh, taking an active part in your mission so what's going to happen is basically uh, this uh, feasibility study will be like taking care of and it will take place in five major aspects okay this was all about appraisal that i told you up okay best of the clarity cool good enough now let's move to the five major topics that is what kind of feasibility studies will be done on behalf of the bank be it bank banking company doing it on itself or maybe they'll be like appointing another company uh, which will be doing that activity on behalf of the banks 
So they are going to check five major aspects. Number one, technical feasibility. Number two, economic feasibility. Number three, commercial feasibility. Number four, financial projections and feasibility. And number fifth is the managerial assessment. So let's cover up each one of them and understand what's going to happen in which uh, feasibility. So that uh, needs to be ensured by your case as well. So the number one being technical feasibility. Guys, what's going to happen in uh, technical feasibility? Okay, number one thing, the bank will check what? What kind of infrastructure facilities do you have? Okay, how about your land where you are uh, basically preparing and planning to set up that project? How about that land, its housing, its transportation, its raw materials, supplies, where, where will you get the fuel? How about uh, the power, the electricity? All these uh, things will be like provided to you or uh, how, by what means you'll be like granted in these steps. So they're going to review all your infrastructure facilities. That is number one thing. Next, they're going to check what location are you fixing up for a project? Are you establishing your project in Orissa or are you establishing your project in Delhi? Are you establishing your project in Andhra Pradesh? And what's the basic differences if you'll be like establishing the project in Orissa? So how is it going to be different from the one which could have been established in Andhra Pradesh or beat uh, New Delhi. So they're going to check that as well. Okay. Depending on that, uh, they are going to judge from the point of view of economy uh, and workability. Let's suppose I am uh, figuring out and uh, setting up a project for ITB systems. So what uh, will be the best location for me? Absolutely. Hyderabad or Bangalore. These are the two IT hubs of the nation. So it's going to be an advantage of a situation where if in case I'll be establishing an IT project, definitely these are the best two areas. And the same uh, thing, if I'll be like, the company is like planning to establish that project be it in Jharkhand or Bihar, will that be having the same kind of uh, conditions and the same kind of judgment if I'll talk about the workability and uh, the basic profitability? Absolutely not. That's going to be entirely different if in case I'll be establishing an IT project in these areas because these areas are still developing. And there is another area in India which is already developed. So your profitability is going to be different uh, in that particular case. Again, uh, they are also going to check the proposed mix of your plant and capacity level. What all you'll be like having if I'll talk about the plant and capacity level. Then uh, the process of your manufacturing and product mixes. Uh, and if in case you need some of the te like technical know-how. So what has been like imported from the foreign country. If in case you are importing some instruments from foreign country. Will that be suitable for your project to be established or not? All these things will be covered under technical feasibility. These are the broad things. That is clear. Good. Go ahead. Number two comes in the economic feasibility. So guys, what's going to happen in economic feasibility is basically this banking system, that entire banking system, they are going to check out uh, and they are going to examine what is the market potential of your product. Okay. You're proposing a product which needs to be manufactured. So what is the possibility that your project is going to be successful in the market? They are going to identify and examine the economic feasibility of that. Okay. Let's suppose I'm preparing, uh, I'm manufacturing a new kind of pencil. Okay. Which is better than Nataraj, which is better than Apsara and all these other brands. Okay. It's a very dark pencil and, uh, it basically provides you the best of the advantages with rubber facilities, sharpener facilities inside it. Okay. Now, if I'll be like uh, producing this project of mine in front of any kind of bank, bank is going to identify and examine whether the project is going to be successful or not. So they'll be like having their own layers of testing. Okay. That this friend, uh, I'll be having this many projections for my cash flows for the next eight, nine years or not. All these things will be checking, taken care of in case of economic feasibility. So it is important to analyze whether or not the output that you'll be preparing in a new unit will be absorbed in the market or not, whether the market will really appreciate and welcome you uh, with a, like uh, warm hands or not, this has to be taken care of. These projections are basically dependent on the market forecast for any of the product. So uh, the overall demand basically of any of the forecast of various important categories of product are regularly developed by various agencies and that is going to be taken care of in economic feasibility. Now moving to the commercial one, commercial feasibility, what's the commercial feasibility? Okay. Now the bank says, okay, dude, I am clear with the fact that I need to provide you the loan. Okay. I'll do that. No worries. Now, apart from taking the loan from my end, okay, what all preparations have you made in terms of financial feasibility? Okay. Are you really prepared while uh, you opt for uh, taking the loan from my end with the other things that you need to focus upon? So this refers basically to the examination of the commercial aspects and the arrangements which are made by your end for the project. Financial institutions, basically guys, they try to examine the arrangements which are made by you. That is, you are the applicant 
for the procurement of machinery raw materials are you really uh, like keen to have those them up are you like really uh, one step ahead with the bank uh, if in case the bank provides you the loan are you really prepared to take up the plant and machinery and raw materials are they really available in your premises already and so that you can take care of the sale of goods okay this basically they ensure that the sale uh, and such arrangements are basically purely commercial in nature and do not tend to benefit the promoters or relatives let's suppose uh, there is a situation where in i am getting the raw materials from just one single supplier whether the bank will entertain this thing and on the other hand there is uh, a company okay you are establishing a company and you are manufacturing a product okay and you have a little like 10 to 15 suppliers for that okay and you are basically providing the contract on competitive bidding basis so to whom uh, the bank is going to favor up only that one supplier wala case or uh, in that other case like um, the person where uh, i'll be like going for the competitive bidding one absolutely the one which uh, the option which was available with the competitive bidding one. so the ones which are going for the competitive bidding definitely bank is going to prefer providing the loan to that company because they are doing such thing on the commercial feasibility basis that is something good with that number fourth is financial projection and feasibility so now talking about the financial projections okay what about the projections of the cash flows for the next 5 years down the line 10 years down the line 15 years down the line basically while ascertaining the financial viability of any of the project okay guys the financial condition and the financial cash flows will have to be forecasted in any way you get some of the project to the business okay and you bring it on the table of a bank okay the bank is going to ask you up okay what's your projection for the next 5 years whether you will like you'll be like able to earn a maximum profit of this much amount or that much so it's going to be like provided in that particular case at the first initial step itself so for this basically purpose what they require they require the projected statements which are generally prepared by you as an applicant what all will be there number 1 balance sheet number 2 uh, the sources and the uses of the funds that you will be taking care of the projected cash flow statement all these things will be like required financial feasibility it basically refers to the appraisal of the cost of the project the financial structure and the expected financial results of the project so what all basic things will be examined in this particular case number 1 what is the estimate of your cost of the project okay you are telling at the initial phase that i'll be preparing that project for 100 crore rupees okay so you need to drop the complete details of that okay how uh, did you finally came to a point wherein you got the cost of the project as 100 crores you need to tell that to the bank number 2 you need to provide them the sources of finance from all from all the persons from whom you are taking up the finance okay apart from that bank the bank needs to know that as well the source of finance be it your financial institutions be it your other persons around be it your suppliers be it your vendors anyone uh, financial institution basically they ensure that the total financial requirements cover not only the cost of the fixed asset but also any kind of contingency if in case that will happen the working capital requirements the initial cash losses that will happen all these things will be taken care of in that particular case so the banks the financial institutions what all they do they basically examine the patterns of your financing the project okay they prefer that the owner should commit their own funds substantially by way of subscription to the share capital they just don't want that okay we as bank are providing you the loan for let's say 100 crore rupees at least you should invest your own amount let's say for 50 crores 60 crores 70 crores down the line so that not uh, that there there won't be a situation where only our money will get stuck in that okay there there should be a commitment wherein uh, you should uh, invest some amount of money and we should invest on your behalf another amount of money that will be a best kind of a thing okay this is something which will happen in financial pro- projections and feasibility now lastly about the managerial assessment do you think that the bank will be like only concerned about the money that they are providing no they will also be concerned about the kind of managerial expertise people are having to run that company okay this person is ratan tata and they are asking for loan bank will be more than happy to provide them the loan why because there is a person who is providing them the backing and that is mr ratan tata okay so he has got the managerial experience of so many years down the line that even if the company will be like flunking it down or at the verge of liquidation definitely this man is going to bring it to the complete cent percent that he doesn't want or he doesn't allow that company to liquidate in any of the cases he, he will run and uh, make sure that nothing goes wrong in that okay so an important part of assessment which is conducted by the financial institution it's also to examine the competence the skill and the reliability of management 
uh, assessment which is basically made by the financial institutions regarding the managerial skills of any of the persons keeping in view the professional qualifications their abilities their past record their integrity obviously uh, financial institutions would put a premium on competent and honest management any time all this were a part of appraisal activity of the banks which are being done while they are providing you the term loans any time technical feasibility economic feasibility commercial feasibility financial projections and feasibility and managerial assessment i hope i was able to provide you ample amount of examples in order to make you understand this concept clearly guys perfect so let's move towards the next topic of the day and that will be zero date of project this question has already been asked in two of the first final attempts C final November 2010 and C final November 2013 what do i mean by zero date of project so guys zero date of project is basically a date that is a start point okay start point from where the completion of the project will be counted is the zero date of our project okay zero date will simply mean that all the formalities such as like uh, your company formation your infrastructure arrangement you your finance tie up with any of the bank your compliances all these things are like already been completed okay now you are starting with your project okay the date of your start of the project your construction activity or any activity your start of the project will be termed as the zero date pre project activities like already been completed before this zero date so no worries about that particular stuff be it your identification uh, be it your determination of your plant capacity your selection of the technical expertise your location your selection of the site your manpower planning their rec recruitment their cost all these things like already been done now you are through with all these things and you are just starting your project your project work has effectively started that date of starting of your project will be zero date of project are you like clear with this particular point cool let's move towards the next topic and that will be modified irr so guys this is basically the updated version of irr okay irr is one such thing which is usually compared with npv net present value and irr is internal rate of return these are the two different cost wherein uh, you get the percentage okay that i'll be like uh, basically discounting all my funds my cash flows and other things other aspects on this particular interest rate so this is something which you get in mirr as well so modified irr is basically the similar one to the irr but it is theoretically superior okay why because of two weaknesses that irr had and this one basically overcomes both these weaknesses number one irr guys it assumes that all the intermediate cash flows that the company is going to receive in between they'll be reinvested at the irr only okay as a result of which at times we get multiple irr that is internal rate of return MIRR basically this correctly assumes that reinvestment of any of the project is done at the cost of cap capital itself okay that is k and it avoids the problem of multiple IRRs that is the basic thing about it okay IRR assume that all the intermediate cash flows are reinvested at IRR which creates multiple ones but this one assumes that it is being reinvested only at the cost of capital and it remains same for all the work okay that is the thing now how we can calculate and reach to a position while we assess that we need to have modified irr there are three basic steps for that number one you need to estimate all your cash flows that you'll be uh, basically earning all during the entire life cycle of that uh, project okay estimate all the cash flows number one number two you need to calculate the future value okay you need to calculate all the future value of all those cash flows uh, you can take the help of uh, that cost of capital k in that particular case at the last year of the project's life you need to identify all the future cash flows number 3 you need to determine the discount rate finally so that discount rate which will cause the sum of all the future cash flows to be equal to the firm's initial investment okay at the time of zero date okay that's going to be the discounting rate for mirr that will be the case in this particular stuff you will be able to understand this concept very clearly i have like briefly provided you how we'll be calculating it and how we'll be doing that but this will will be covered once i'll be starting and teaching you up and making you understand how to go about taking care of the questions which are asked in ca final examination so plenty 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 of questions are waiting for you down the line i have already prepared those presentations you'll get them as well soon so you'll get them up so all these points all these things which i'm telling you in theoretically over here you'll get to see the same things being done as far as the practical concepts and practical questions are also concerned you'll get to see over there 
all you need to do is just remember that how we'll be like reaching to the position of calculating the modified IRR. Perfect guys, let's move towards the next topic and that will be the last one for the day. That is cash flow estimation and analysis. So guys, in order to estimate the cash flow for any of the company, okay, in order to evaluate the project using one of the techniques, you require a few things. Number one, the NPV, that is the net present value, or you will require the IRR, that is the internal rate of return. So therein, you'll be like able to first estimate what all will be the appropriate cash flows, which you'll be like receiving and the ones which will be like outgoing in, uh, as, as an outflow, which are associated with your project, okay. And this is very much required in order to assess the attractiveness of a project okay let's suppose i am basically uh, the cost of mine for my project is 100 crore rupees okay but the benefit that i'll be drawing after investing 100 crores is merely 50 crores rupees so will i be like going forward with the same absolutely not there is uh, there is no point going ahead with any of the project if i'm not receiving back the benefit so what's going to happen is the same way we identify the cash flows which are estimated and thereby on the behalf of those estimation we basically analyze whether you should go ahead with the project or not so we'll take care of basically two of the cash flows number one is the relevant cash flows number two is the irrelevant cash flows what do i mean by relevant cash flows relevant cash flows guys are basically the cash flows that usually come out about as a direct consequence of your decision to take up that certain project okay now, if I'm uh, developing an IT project, so whatever cash flows that I'll be like receiving out of that IT project will be a direct consequence for that, right? Absolutely. So this will be my relevant cash flows. Apart from that, there are some of the situations where if, even if I don't uh, put up this of the project, okay, but still I'll be receiving some amount as uh, maybe interest from any other bank or maybe like some amount of FDs or something like that. So all these are irrelevant cash flows, okay? Irrelevant cash flows are the cash flows that come about regardless of whether the proposed action that the project is taken up or not. So the most logical way to decide if a project should be taken is to look at the cash flows for the firm with the proposed project and without the proposed project simultaneously. Okay. So have you about heard this thing which is known as uh, incremental cash flow concept? Absolutely. That is the one which will be applied in most of the scenarios. So incremental cash flows which are uh, associated with any of the project, you can go and take up this particular thing wherein you'll get to know about uh, whether we should invest in a project or not. The incremental cash flows are basically the difference between a firm's future cash flows with and without the project. The relevant cash flows of the project can be classified into major three heads. Number one, uh, initial investment. Number two, what all operating cash flows will be like received and uh, the ones will be like outflow in that particular case. And number three is the terminal cash flows. What all will you receive at the end of the project? basically done these are the only three steps cool good enough now let's talk about each one of them one by one let's move with the initial investment so while going for the initial investment you need to be aware about one thing okay that uh, initial investment is basically the one which is uh, the amount of money that you'll be spending in order to get a new project started be it your uh, costing in terms of your new building your new furniture your uh, new fixtures any other things okay that will be your initial cost now, going forward with the initial investment, you need to understand the basic uh, thing with relation to the, these four aspects. Number one, sunk cost. Number two, opportunity cost. Number three, installed cost of new assets and the working capital. Guys, what do I mean by sunk cost? Sunk cost is, basi is basically, guys, something which has already uh, like incurred. Okay, this is something which has already been incurred. And regardless of the fact whether you take up the project or not, this cost is not going to be eliminated. Perfect. So since this cost will not be eliminated in any of the cases, it's rather better not to take up this particular cost while going with the estimation of the cash flow and analysis. Why? Because this is something which is going to happen whether you take up the project or not. So some cost is that cost which has already been paid prior to making the decision for the projects under consideration. And it's very easy to understand that the sunk cost should not be included in the decision process of choosing the projects at all. Number two is the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost guys is basically something which the firm basically gives up in order to take up your project. Okay. I have got like 50 crore rupees. Okay. And I have two projects in my mind. One is relating to coal mines. Another one is relating towards IT project. Okay. Now the only basic problem is I won't be able to invest my money in both the projects. Okay. I need to take up one. 
okay now what's going to happen is i am going to basically uh, be clear and basically i'll leave I, I i'll have to leave the cash flows which i'll get from one of the projects in in order to ensure that i get the cash flows from another one okay in consideration for that let's suppose uh, the the cash flows from a uh, uh, coal project okay they'll be like able to provide me a, a return of let's say 15 percent and the it projects is likely to provide me the return of let's say 25 percent so for that uh, that earning for earning of that 25 percent i had to forego those 50 percent so what benefit did i made out of it i made up a return of 10 percent more okay i had to leave 15 for that so opportunity cost is what the firm basically gives up in order to ensure that the project is taken up this concept of opportunity cost is usually very very difficult to understand guys so uh, it basically takes a time for analyzing both the financial figures in order to understand which product sh project should be taken up and which one to be left alone next comes install cost of the new assets so the install cost of the new assets guys this will include how much the firm should pay for the new assets be it their direct cost and how much to install uh, them be it your installation cost so basically this will divide and bifurcate your uh, your amount your costing into two aspects one is the direct cost another one is the installation cost so therein you'll be able to get the comparison how much you need to incur at the time of uh, purchasing the new assets and how much uh, at the time of installing them up next comes the working capital for any of the company be it uh, the small scale enterprises be it your construction companies be it your it projects working capital is something which is essentially required every new project needs to start with some of the working capital working capital is nothing but the difference between your current asset and your current liabilities so if in case i say if your company is basically willing to expand its operation by taking up the new project they need to have more cash they need to have more receivables they need to have more inventories to support their increased sales and they need to have their uh, accounts payable accordingly uh, so that they can have the new purchases as well so this particular change in the cash flow uh, with respect to the change in working capital it is very essential to be noted right at this beginning step this was all about the initial investments now moving on to the second part that is the operating cash flows so basically operating cash flows will be the one which will flow in uh, while taking up the project okay these are the cash flows that will be resulted from the project directly and it is important to note that the taxes play a very key role in that okay so only the after tax operating cash flows should be considered why because uh, if you are taking up the taxes and paying them up then you'll be saving amount uh, same the expense amount on that as well so uh, only in that particular case we need to take up after tax operating cash flows and not the ones before tax so it will have two basic things that you need to remember number one is the effect on other projects and number two is depreciation number one is the effect of other projects it is very much important guys for you to remember that we are dealing only with the incremental cash flows okay what benefit i am getting from the new cash flows in comparison to the earlier okay in this particular case we have to identify very carefully that how the presence of the new project will affect the cash flows for the firm with their other existing projects number two is the depreciation depreciation is basically the one which is basically going to represent a tax benefit to the firm okay if in case i pay depreciation my income comes down my income comes down i have to pay less amount of taxes so because since the fact that it's going to lower my taxable income this is basically known as that depreciation tax shield okay tax rate into depreciation we get that figure which is basically going to be my benefit if i'll be charging depreciation out of it so this is a very important aspect if i'll talk about the construction companies wherein the depreciation amount is huge so it's gonna affect uh, completely the operating cash flows at the higher amounts okay lastly i'll talk about the terminal cash flows after tax uh, uh, after uh, taking up taking care of this operating cash flows you'll get the figure with after tax cash flows operating cash flows lastly with the terminal value okay terminal cash flow guys simple enough uh, whatever things you'll be getting once the project is being completed in terms of cash flows that will be the terminal cash flow where the project is terminated any assets which are directly related to the project will be sold absolutely and any kind of change which is usually happening in the networking capital from the initial investment that will be recaptured the firm will have to determine the difference between the assets sale price and their then existing undepreciated book value and this is going to be taken care of at the last which is which is going going to be part of terminal cash flows 
This is all about the complete cash flow estimation and analysis. How we we'll go about taking care of our questions once we'll start them up. So this is the basic understanding of that. I hope I was able to deliver you the complete kind of understanding with each relevant topic that I made you understand today. All you need to do is, guys, just revise the topic. My my any of the things which I am doing over here, my 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 walking style, my teaching style, my making you understanding style. This will all go in vain if, in case you don't do your stuff okay and that is nothing but revising and retaining your topic then only we'll be able to reach to our target of making you as chartered accountants perfect guys with this i'll say thank you on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting with our questions queries in youtube comment boxes i will love to answer each one of your queries and grievances if in case you have liked our video and if in case you have find it informative do we do give us a thumbs up and uh, provide us the good kind of comments in order to ensure that our morale remains boosted up Stay connected. That will help us in understanding your needs way, way, way better, guys. I'll see you in the next presentation with a lot more fascinating and exciting topics. Till then, sign up. God bless you all. Take care. Bye.